Most of the people that you see here that are dressed really edgy, that's their fashion, that's how they dress, that's how they go home, and that's how they go to school. There's some people who dress up to uh, come to Harajuku, but most of the people that you see here that are dressed really edgy, that's their fashion, that's how they dress, that's how they go home, and that's how they go to school. This is a little bit uh, fairy K, which is a fairy style, and this is a little bit punk style. And rock. This is kind of a rock style. So it's a mixture of a lot of things, and that's typical Harajuku. They take a little bit of everything and make something new. I've talked with people who have chosen a specific school where they were allowed to dress like that, and they insisted on not going to a school where they have to wear the uniform and where they are not allowed to dye their hair or do any kind of uh, body tattoos and stuff like that. We are here in Yoyogi Park, and this is actually the starting point of Harajuku fashion, even though that seems really strange. This used to be a military drilling ground. Then, at the end of World War II, the Americans took the drilling ground over and they built a very large village for the military families and they called it Washington Heights. This started to attract a lot of Japanese young people because there were many shops and they would sell bicycles, huge American refrigerators, everything that showed American culture, things that the Japanese people were not used to at all. So they would come to this area and try to touch and try to taste this really mysterious American culture. Aran san, konnichiwa. Genki. Genki desu. So, the inspiration comes from a lot of sources. It comes partly from music, especially Japanese music. It comes from manga, uh, anime. Um, it comes even from traditional Japanese clothing like yukata and kimono. You have basically a relatively small group of trendsetters. Then other people start to imitate it and suddenly they are not original anymore so they have to come up with something else. And that kind of escalates so you automatically get extremes because you want to be different, you want to be different, you want to be different, so you have to be, in the end, really extreme to still remain different. Until now everybody was kawaii, was cute, and Harajuku has become, has become famous because of the kawaii fashion. And she wants to do something that's un-kawaii, that's not kawaii, that is edgy, that's completely the opposite of kawaii. So she has even cut her tongue. That's actually a very important aspect of Japanese fashion. It doesn't have any political or social meaning. For Japanese people, fashion is like putting paint on a canvas, and you are the canvas. So fashion is fun with a giant F. Somebody can wear Lolita on Monday, punk on Tuesday, uh, gothic on Wednesday, and wear a suit to uh, work on Thursday. It's not like um, in the West where punk is a way of living, a way of thinking, a way of, way of uh, and, uh, experiencing life in the world. If you're gothic, you're gothic. If you're punk, you're punk. <laughs> 